Hey everyone. So I would just like to share with you some fun and also some quite crazy audition stories and as well as some facts that might be good to know, especially for younger musicians who are doing tons of additions to orchestras these days. Uh, some of these facts are already yeah, famously known, especially for already, of course, professional musicians. They know all of this stuff in advance or they know it now. <laughs> uh, I also learned it way too late, but um, I think just to save some young musicians time, then I would like to talk a little bit about this slightly sensitive and uh, dangerous topic here. Um, regarding the stories I'm going to share, uh, they are actually all from my own experience when I did tons of auditions uh, across Europe. And this is just a few years ago. So I still believe, or well, I still know that the auditions, at least in Europe, are still held in the same way. So I think it's still sort of relevant for young people today. Uh, most of these kind of stories that I'm going to talk about now and these kind of facts are normally not really spoken loud about <clears throat> uh, in the public view, mostly because of the fact that very many auditions is not a fair play. And uh, for the applicants, it can be seen as rather degrading also with talking about or sharing a story that of an audition that they did not win. But you have to remember even some of the biggest musical personalities we have have also failed auditions. Even Bach failed audition. So this happened to absolutely everyone, most likely in your life, if you go the professional way here. Uh, personally, I don't really mind uh, sharing some of my uh, audition stories here, even if I didn't win uh, these auditions, because I think it shows a bit of my progress as well. Uh, I think it's healthy to have this kind of distance and attitude towards these kind of stories. Uh, and it's also uh, good to know that on Facebook or on YouTube or social media platforms, um, if you're friends with many great performers, then it can always look like that these people, you know, they, they have it amazing. They're playing amazing gigs, playing with amazing orchestras, doing this concert. Everything is just great all the time, but you don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. And one of the many things that is going on behind the scenes are all of these auditions. And uh, that is why they're so relevant to talk about, I find, especially also online. So one of many things is, of course, to know that the result of an audition <clears throat> can sometimes already have been decided before even the audition finds place. Uh, so in some cases, the audition is simply a formality that you have to go through, uh, despite that Information like this is not very popular to talk about, uh, especially in a public view. I decided to do it anyway, because I know well how it is to do auditions uh, in these modern times. And I also know from quite more recent years uh, how it is also to be on the other side of the screen, meaning also in the jury. And a lot of the predictions that many of the more experienced uh, applicants that are doing auditions have are true. Many of them are true, uh, but also some of them are not. Um, and I think it's important to, to mention these things also because uh, I know that to go for all of these auditions, especially if you go for like 20 auditions or something like this, there's a lot of money involved. That's one thing uh, for travel expenses, for a place to sleep, food, maybe you even are canceling several gigs just to prepare properly for this audition, some money. Uh, the time, of course, you need to do all of this stuff, both for traveling and uh, also for preparing. And not least, also all the effort going into all the preparation work with learning all of these excerpts and solo repertoire is a lot of stuff. And that can take weeks, sometimes months, to really prepare excellently. And then uh, it might be good to know that the audition you prepare so much for has already been decided. Uh, then if you know that in advance, then you might consider, shall I still do this audition? Shall I go for it and maybe prove them wrong somehow, try to be lucky? Or do I just simply ignore this one and go to the next audition? Yeah. And very last, before I go on with the stories, I just want to mention briefly that uh, I'm currently done with auditioning myself. At least that's how I see it now. I'm very happy where I am. Um, and all of the stories is from my own experience. Like back in the day when I did tons of auditions, I probably did between 20 to 40 auditions, something like that. Some went very well, some went sort of standard, some went not so good, which I think is quite normal for people who are doing a lot of auditions. It can be either your own fault or your reads or some circumstances or whatever it might be. Um, but still, I, I think it's okay to talk about these things now because I'm not going to sort of hurt my own uh, reputation if I was in the audition game because I'm, I'm, I see myself done with that now. Um, 
but since it's done out of my own experience, which was just a few years old, then I think some of this can be interesting for uh, new musicians to hear. So the first messed up story, which is not necessarily the worst or the best one, it, it just happened to be the first story right now, um, was an audition in Germany that I did. Uh, I'm not going to mention any names, of course. Um, there were around 10 to 12 people who did this audition, so not a very big audition, but the level was crazy good. It was really high level on all the participants, which I know because I was in the same audition room. We all had one room where we all warmed up and you could just hear that all of them played really well. Um, however, even though there were really many good people there, it was only one person that went to second round. And it was not me and it was not any of my friends. It was no one that no one had really ever seen before. And everyone was, of course, curious, like, who, who is this person? And wow, this person must be really amazing because, you know, there's really many good people here and none of us are even good enough to compete with this person in a second round. Who is this? Is it a, you know, future Tunaman or who, who is this? So, of course, uh, she, it was a girl, I remember, and she went on to the second round and uh, the rest of us were very curious how this sounds. So she was preparing for second round in a practice room and many of us were outside the door of that practice room just listening like how what's going on you know and uh, we heard that she had to prepare smetana for kauf de braut or the, the barted bride the overture which has a lot of double tonguing and stuff like that and we we all could hear that you know if the jury is asking this person to actually play this in concert tempo then there is no chance that this is going to work uh, double tonguing wasn't there and it was just off so we were really con really confused because most of the people who was on this audition would be able to play that excerpt because it is a very standard audition excerpt. This is things you study tons when you're doing auditions. So we were very confused, but yeah, we, we left anyway. And uh, later we got to know that, yeah, this girl, she got the job. Well, fine enough. She was alone, you know, in second round. So, okay, fine enough. Makes sense. You have no one to compete against. So of course you're the best one. Um, however, later we got to know, of course, that uh, this, uh, this girl had, of course, a relationship with one of the principal players who were in the jury. And, um, you know, so then we already understood, aha, a little mafia going on here. Later on, during the trial, they broke up. She didn't pass the trial then. And suddenly we could all see that the same audition was coming up again on the same kind of audition pages that you find online, such as Muvak and musical chairs and stuff like that. And then, of course, this time, this audition had much less applicants. I also didn't apply that time. And I think many of my friends know where that was. And uh, it's something we laugh about now, but you know, it's pretty messed up to think about that. That's the way many people actually go. Quite depressing in many ways. But yeah, this is nothing new. This stuff happens way too often. So this was just one of many stories coming up now. Uh, this audition, th this was really fun. Uh, in a bad way because it was really poorly unorganized and um, the pianist was I think she has must have never been in this kind of situation before she was super stressed and uh, it, she even managed to mess up my audition before I started to play Mozart because I was number one first one going into the stage and uh, it was obligatory for all the participants to tune uh, before we play the, the Mozart which is also a bit special but okay fine enough so I, I thought not a problem so I, I, the pianist, you know, played the tuning note, and in 99.99% .99 of the cases, that happens to be an A. And I don't have absolute pitch, so I imagined, okay, this is an A. So I played my A, but she uh, uh, played actually a B flat, not an A, because uh, most of the bassoon conservatory starts on a B flat, so she probably just thought I would prefer the tune in the tonality of the concerto I'm playing in. Which in one way is a good thought, but of course then you're standing there on the audition floor tuning a B flat and an A at the same time and you have this minor second interval there, which was really messed up. And then of course after that I was thinking, oh crap, okay, she's playing a B flat. So I changed to B flat, but then she was thinking the same. Oh crap, this guy, he's playing an A. I need to play an A. So they just went from, you know, B flat to A to B flat and A, which was just so bad. <laughs> Terrible first impression. So embarrassing. Uh, but then, yeah, after that, I played my Mozart, they went fine, and I was even to second round on that audition. So thanks to the jury for, <laughs> for, for letting that one through. The next audition was uh, also a crazy story. It was in, uh, in the UK, and uh, I think it was in the first round. Uh, we were obliged to play Mozart, of course, uh, two, three excerpts, and uh, in the end also some sight reading. 
uh, which is maybe more popular to do in the UK than uh, most other places. They have a good tradition on that. They're normally really good at sight reading. So my respect for that. Personally, I'm maybe not the best. But anyway, <clears throat> the thing was, uh, there were really many people on this audition. So of course, if you want to speed up the process a bit, then uh, things are going very much like this. So you had the audition room here, you had a door to the stage, and basically the next applicant is just behind the door. So just before me, there was a guy, actually a good friend of mine who we studied together, uh, not mentioning any names, but anyway, he did a really good job and he got to sight read the Cosi Fantute, which was not on our excerpt list that we had prepared. So I thought, okay, well actually, you know what, fine enough. Cosi Fantute is a very standard excerpt and uh, most people who do auditions, they know this excerpt anyway, so very fine. So he played it and it actually sounded okay from what I could hear through the door. He went out, I went in, played my Mozart, did the excerpt, and then it was my turn to sight read. And of course I imagined, yeah, I guess we get the same stuff. So I was sort of mentally preparing for a cosy. But then, no, I actually ended up getting Benjamin Britten a, a piano concerto uh, with some uh, descending uh, major sevenths and stuff like that in quite a rapid tempo. And I, I was quite surprised because this is nothing standard at all. I never, I didn't even know the piece. It's not in any standard orchestra excerpt book that at least I knew of. Uh, so of course sometimes that can happen that you are unfairly treated in comparison to other people uh, due to the difficulty of like sight reading exercises that you get. Um, so that might be worth to know because uh, if I would have gotten Cosi Van Tute, that I would have been able to play I think at least fairly much better than the Britain because Cosi Van Tute I had already learned. Stuff like that. You can be unfortunate. <laughs> so yeah, the next one is uh, for my own audition. Some addition that I did where the first round was just Mozart. I played the Mozart, it went fine. I went to second round and in the second round they asked me to do some excerpts and I could choose between either first movement um, Weber or first and second movement Sassans. Uh, I decided to go with Sassans because yeah, I just had that more in the fingers uh, at that time. And also of course in Sassans high E in the end there, I was maybe feeling that I could show off with a high note or something like that. So I went with Sassans. And it went sort of standard. Uh, the, the high E worked out, but you know, it was maybe not legendary, but it was also not really bad, sort of in the middle. Um, but yeah, so I, I didn't get any trial there. So I asked, of course, for some feedback. But of course, the jury was quite tired. Uh, they had been listening to, you know, uncountable amount of people before, and they just probably just wanted to go home. They didn't feel like really giving much feedback. But I got just a feedback from a guy basically walking out from the, uh, from the orchestra room saying that, yeah, you know, your Weber was not really that good because the low C didn't speak. And I'm thinking, but uh, I was here playing Sassans, you know, stuff like that. Uh, here's another audition. This one was in Scandinavia. And the thing was, uh, I was staying at uh, my parents' place at the time in Stavanger in Norway. And I had a flight to this audition, which was somewhere else in Scandinavia. And then after that, I had a connecting flight from there to Madrid, where I had a bassoon lesson. So, uh, but unfortunately, I was sick. I almost had like 39 uh, Celsius in fever. Uh, so normally I would never go for this audition, but since I had a connecting flight anyway, I needed actually to go to this town. And while I was there, I was like, well, I might as well, you know, just, I don't know, take something to reduce the fever for a few hours and then just do the audition anyway, since I'm here. And um, of course, yeah, when, when you're feeling that bad, of course, an audition doesn't go really that well, you know, but, uh, and the same happened to a friend of mine also, he also didn't feel it didn't go that well. So both me and him were like, you know what, yeah, let's not care about this. We, we go out, we have a chat, maybe let's have a beer, yeah. So we, we went to a pub, we had a beer, and then after the whole first round was done, then we went back just to, you know, maybe hear some feedback and just to confirm that, yeah, of course, we're kicked out, yeah. But then uh, we got to hear that actually both of us, we are onto the second round. <laughs> and now not only did I have like 39 in fever, but I also had a beer. So <laughs> that was terrible. So I think that the lesson I learned on that is never take, um, uh, take it for granted that you're out. Just because you didn't like how you played doesn't mean that the jury thought the same. <laughs> Next up, it's not really a fun story or something. It's just a little fact. It is that when you are in the middle of this circle of doing tons of auditions, basically way too many, uh, and it's easy to basically just apply for everything and just hope you get some invitations and then you just do whatever you get invited for and you don't even know really where this is, what orchestra it is, and uh, you don't really care so much about all those details anymore. It's some dwarf somewhere, you know, some small town somewhere, fine enough, yeah. So you, you just go there, but then the thing is when you actually show up and if this audition goes well, 
and you start to think, but actually, I really don't like it here. I, I don't like it, this city, and um, the, the hall is bad, and uh, not really good atmosphere. Do I really want this job, actually? Why am I here? Why am I doing this audition? I don't want this. You know, so sometimes you can do it for experience, just to stay in shape and stuff like that. But I would recommend you, when you are in the hottest period of that uh, audition streak, uh, still make sure that you actually apply for stuff that you want. <laughs> And on another audition, uh, there were, of course, tons of excerpts. And one of them was this um, first movement of uh, Ravel Piano Concerto, the stuff with the high E. Um, and um, I played several excerpts in a row. And then uh, the chairman was like asking everyone in the jury, yeah, would you like to hear some more, something like this? And one guy goes like, yeah, I would like to hear this excerpt with the high E again. That didn't really work out that well, I think. And I was thinking, whoa, okay, interesting. Yeah, well, I, no problem, I can do it again. So, so I played it again, and then uh, it was sort of fine, and uh, I was not further. I didn't pass on to the to the next round, and the feedback was that was that my high E w was not controlled enough, and it, it didn't really work out. Uh, even though it, it worked both times, and uh, it, I think if there is one thing that I was confident on at the time, it was that no matter what happens, at least high notes, I actually know how to do pretty okay. But that was the only thing they really didn't like. <laughs> so you, you never know what kind of feedback you're going to get. So sometimes you just have to say, okay, I of course understand. Yeah, I will, I will focus a lot on that. Yes. So the next audition uh, is also from the UK. Did a few auditions there. <laughs> they, they went pretty okay normally, but there was some pretty messed up stuff that happens there sometimes. So here is one of, one of them. And uh, the audition started at 10 o'clock which I think is very standard. And uh, that means, of course, if the audition starts at 10, that means you don't show up at 10, you show up before. So I showed up at nine to, you know, pack up my instrument, soak my reeds, make sure I have all the music, warm up a bit, also have a few minutes break before I actually have to play for the people, stuff like that. So I show up and then I just get the information. No, 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 you're, you're way too early. This is not ready, yeah? You need to come back at 10, that's when it starts. Okay, fine enough, I guess. I mean, everyone gets the same treatment, so okay. So I just went for a few, you know, walk around the neighborhood, found a coffee shop, uh, had a sandwich, and then I just went back and I was back like two minutes before 10. Uh, and then I meet the same guy again, super stressed because he has a list and I'm number one uh, on the list. So I'm the first one who starts to play on this audition, uh, which I didn't know and he didn't tell me about. So he says, you know, you have, you need to hurry up. You're, you're starting in two minutes and you will probably delay the whole process now. Okay, so I was just really stressed, of course, having bassoon on my back and everything, just ran into a practice room, uh, packed it up really quickly, sort of half soaked to read. It was not really soaked, it was sort of a bit dry, didn't really work that well. And then you just run in on this audition uh, and the first note you really play is like tuning A with the piano. Uh, so I played through everything. It was not a screen or anything, just open audition, small dry room, not really maybe the best for this. But okay, fine enough. And after me, it was another guy. And after only the two of us, the jury already needed a break, which is quite strange. I mean, you have maybe 30 people on this audition and after two people, you need a break. Uh, and everyone was sort of reacting a bit on that. What's going on? You need a break now. And after their break, uh, me and this other guy, we just got the information that both of us, we are out. And uh, it, it, yeah, game over basically. And we were wondering, how do you know? I mean, you have not compared us to like anyone yet. How do you know that everyone else is so much better, for example? So that was really a surprise. So we really didn't know what was going on. And then, of course, in the end, who ended up with the job? Yeah, of course, it was the guy who was directly invited into the second round, who didn't even need to do the first round like the rest of us did. So stuff like that can also happen. So be aware of that. <laughs> Also to throw in a bit more uh, positive one, maybe not to be so dark on all the stories here. So it's typical Scandinavian dark, <coughs> dark humor. Uh, it's uh, another audition. Uh, I passed the first round and then in the second round, there were no screen. And uh, I think that the, the bassoonists in the jury, they maybe know me from online or something like this. I didn't personally know them. So I was just behaving as nice as I could because they recognized my bassoon. Because for those of you who doesn't know, I have an instrument with quite a lot of extra key work. Uh, and some of it is sort of visible if you know what you're looking for. So they came up to me after audition, like in the audition room, like, wow, this is really cool. You're nice to meet you. You're cool to see this instrument. Let me, can I have a look? And I was thinking, whoa, 
this is different. <laughs> Never used to that before. Okay, interesting. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, so I explained them a little bit and they were like, wow, very interesting. Okay, cool. And then I left the room and I thought, and I thought to myself, wow, okay, so this is it. You know, that's the job I'm going to get. I mean, th these guys like me apparently. And then of course, what happened later? Nothing, <laughs> no trial at all. Just absolutely nothing. But, but that was a quite interesting experience. Uh, rarely happening, I think. <laughs> Yeah, next up uh, was also an audition in Scandinavia and uh, in this case it was pretty clear that on this audition the jury is quite a mafia, let's say. They already knew who they wanted and uh, even gossip was spreading around while audition was finding place and stuff like that. So it, it was more on the obvious side and uh, the thing was it was a screen, of course, on the audition. Um, so the jury, they needed somehow to filter out uh, who is who because they wanted, you know, their people to win this stuff. So then in one of the excerpts, uh, the two favorites of them had gotten information that they should add a little trill, a little ornamentation, a little ornament uh, on one of these notes uh, that apparently some people have done in like a concert performance and it's like a typical thing to do, but you didn't do it on audition because it was not really written in the part. Um, so, okay, I spoke with some of these people because one of these guys was also a really good friend of mine and he just asked me like, did you also get this information that you should add this ornament there? And I was like, no, no, never did that. Why, why are you doing that? No, because I got this information that, you know, that would be smart to do. Hmm. Okay, good to know. So then actually I thought, you know what? I'm going to do that too. So I <laughs> showed up on the audition and did the same ornament. And all three of us suddenly were in the in the next round, and next round didn't have a screen. Uh, but then, uh, of course, I was kicked out because then they could see that I was not uh, one of the two people that they preferred. But uh, those two people, they they got it. It was exactly the people who got the the job, or at least the trial. They got the trial, and one of them got the job. So sometimes that can be quite fun too, you know. Even just if there is a screen there, doesn't make it any more democratic. <laughs> So yeah, as far as I can remember, those were most of the stories that I wanted to share here now. Uh, there are for sure many more up in there, but some of them are maybe not worthy uh, to be on the list and other also maybe not suitable. Uh, but you get a little bit of the idea of the hardcore audition uh, stuff that you have to go through sometimes. And um, yeah, most of us have to do that if you eventually want to get into the orchestra jobs. Uh, so good to know maybe that these kind of crazy things happen. And of course the funny thing with this is when you are in the period where you maybe do 30, 40, 50 auditions and you go across Europe, in my case, or the world for maybe some people, is that very many times you actually happen to meet exactly the same people over and over and over again. So there is sort of this core, you know, of, uh, of people who are basically everywhere and then some other people also around. And uh, normally when you do all of these auditions, you get to know them, you know, and <laughs> you start to talk. And uh, it's quite funny because if you would have a photo from every audition in every city and every country that you visited with all these people, that would be a thicker photo album than what you would have with your family, girlfriend, and boyfriend and friends in general. All of these bassoonists, man. I mean, it was such crazy times, but a lot of fun as well. And I know also that many of you, uh, for some reason, managed to still stick around on my YouTube channel as well. Uh, so I see that some of you are following here, which I'm very thankful for. So if you remember some of these uh, other stories that we went through uh, that you would like to share, uh, please do so in the comments below. It would be a lot of fun to hear and to also for my sake to get a little reminder of them. Just please, no names, let's keep it anonym and let's keep it clean. Yeah? So thanks again for uh, listening to this craziness here. <laughs> It was a lot of fun. It's a little bit for my own sake as well, just to have these stories somewhere uh, in case I forget them when I get older and when I think that these stories are not really relevant for anything. But I just thought it was fun to share. And maybe someone out there will actually find use in this stuff. So thanks for listening. See you soon.